I have this uh, DS Lite here that I think I'm finally going to do something with. Uh, someone had sent me this a while back. I've had it for probably like nine months, and at this point I haven't done a single thing with it. Um, as you can probably tell from the video, it is absolutely disgusting. Uh, it feels physically intact. This button doesn't click. I have no idea if it works. This button still clicks. Um, there are chunks missing from the shell here. It's disgusting, and the hinge is broken. It opens this far before you get any resistance, and it will... I don't know. There's, there's entirely too much uh, play. Uh, but if you try and boot it up, you just get a flash on the bottom screen. Now, from what I know about DS Lite consoles, or DS consoles in general, when the console doesn't boot and you just get a flash on one of the screens, it usually means that the other screen is damaged or disconnected. And based on the play I get with the hinge and uh, the fact that it's even broken in some spots and you know the fact that I get a flash on the bottom screen and not the top screen leads me to believe the top screen, if it's not damaged, the ribbon cable itself is. So uh, to fix this console we have several options here. The easiest thing to do is just reshell it and then replace the screen. Uh, but I'm not going to be doing that today. Hopefully, we don't need to replace any parts. I, I am a little bit concerned uh, with this bottom screen. There's this line here. I don't know how well you can make that out on camera. And, I don't know, there there might be some like liquid damage or something, I don't know. But it looks like there's at least a screen protector on here. So we'll get this apart and figure out what the hell's going on. And if all is well we will convert it over to a Game Boy Macro. I got this in the mail today. This is a uh, aluminum, machined aluminum, uh, Game Boy Macro faceplate from uh, a gentleman who goes by the handle Boxy Pixel. Uh, he makes and sells this stuff. I, I picked this up. I, he just started selling them, I believe. Um, if you have heard of the famous aluminum Game Boy Color shell, same guy. I also picked this up because I have a weakness and uh, I don't know. This is one of the blemished ones and there are some marks on it. I mean, I'd, I'd still use it as is, but I think we can get this Cerakoted or powder coated or something. But that's another project for another time. So this thing, well, before I even get into that, if you're not aware of what a Game Boy Macro is, that's basically this right here. This is a, a DS Lite that I converted over to a Game Boy Macro, and you can use it to play Game Boy Advance games, or you can drop a flash card in there and run emulators and such. I don't know how well. Let me turn that light off. There we go. You can see I've got Pokemon Crystal running on it right now, and yeah, it works great. It's fine. Uh, it's a pretty cheap way to get a, a console to play these games because the flash card itself is what like 15 bucks add another five bucks for an SD card if you just happen to not have one laying around and a broken DS Lite you can get for like five bucks so I mean come on 20 bucks for a backlit console that's not bad at all uh, this one I've done quite a bit of work too I had to salvage some parts to fix another perfectly working DS Lite so I ended up putting in a different charging mechanism and while I was at it a different battery because why the hell not um, you know it, it's pretty cool for what it is so uh, I think we'll make another one the biggest issue with this one here is um, I removed the touch screen to fit this 3d printed faceplate and the screen itself is very prone to scratching you can see there's these huge scratches in there which uh, it's wonderful because I can only fix that at this point by replacing the screen. I think you can probably pull the polarizing layer off of it and replace that, but screens themselves are super cheap. It'd be easier to just buy a new screen. All right. So I do know this console charges, and I'm fairly certain that that battery works. But uh, beyond that, I have no idea. I haven't taken this thing apart yet. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. 
I'm assuming, like I was saying earlier, that the issue is just the to upper screen the ribbon cable. So just the fact, just the act of converting this over to a micro should should fix it, solve all my issues there. Okay, so these two screws are Phillips. I remember them being tri-point, but I guess I was mistaken on that. I also might not be the first person to take this apart. This screw in the battery compartment is tri-point. And then the other two screws on the outside are tri-point. And then there's one more in the cart slot, the DS cart slot, small black tripoint. And you see two more screws in there, but I don't think we have to remove those. I can't remember. Or maybe we have to remove that top one. It's a Phillips. don't really have to keep track of all these screws because the if you're doing this for the faceplate well the faceplate came with new screws there are clips along the bottom here you have to snap off and I don't really care about saving you do need to save this uh, ugh, I hate running my nail in there ooh that is we might have some difficulty getting this to work. <laughs> I didn't count on that happening. Um, there is some significant water damage right here. Uh, right here, I see some corrosion on the board. I don't know what that is. Looks like foam or something. I don't know why that would be there. Ooh, this is not looking good. Fuck it, we'll try it out anyway. See what happens. Okay. Once you've got the bottom off, there are two or three, I think two screws. Find out in just a sec. The one that you could see from the outside, and then. Uh, one right over here. God dang. Look at that fuse right there. I know it's still good because I just had the thing plugged in charging, but ugh. That is gnarly. Okay, I'm sorry. We're going to remove this uh, antenna wire here. If I can't get this thing going, I do have another DS Lite motherboard that, uh, Hopefully I can get going. I have a pile of parts. This one has a motherboard in it. There we go. So maybe that one works. If not, I have a third DS. Oh, unplug that too. We want to run this uh, black cable. This is, I believe, the uh, Wi-Fi antenna out from underneath the cart slot. We will be getting rid of that. We don't need it anymore. This white one is the microphone. Thankfully the routing on that is easier. We will be getting rid of that as well. And you can kind of flip this up here. You want to unplug this ribbon cable for the top screen. And then we're done with the top of this console. Good lord. Look at all the crap that's falling out of this thing. Okay, let's remove this screen so we can see what's up. So this connector up here, I believe, is for the touch screen assembly. We don't much need that anymore. And then everything else should be on the front here. This is for the screen itself. And usually they aren't stuck down, but this one is. Okay. All right, 
we might be good. I'm going to have to wash my hands after touching this thing. Okay. Get my soldering iron going. So to convert this thing to a macro, to make it work without that top screen, uh, we need to convince the backlight driver that the top screen is still connected. We don't actually have to connect anything else. But the easiest way to do that is typically a 330 ohm resistor across the uh, backlight pins here. And uh, for those who aren't familiar, Nintendo actually does something really cool with all their consoles, at least all the ones I've worked on. Uh, every single data line and voltage rail has a test pin somewhere on the board. That's what these little gold pads are. So how they work... I don't see any on this side. Whatever, there are plenty on this side. They might all be on this side, in fact. Uh, how they work is, after these boards are manufactured, they basically sit it down on a bed of nails that, uh, you know, feeds it various voltages and, and checks for signals on on some uh, some of the pins there, you know, to try and test it, make sure it's working. That way they can automate the testing and make sure that the console's working before they even finish assembling it. And if there are issues, you know, they can pull the motherboard and uh, subject it for further testing or even just toss it, you know, scrap it, it's bad. So we will take advantage of those test points if I can get this freaking thing out of here. You know, let's use tweezers. Since I'll need them anyway. Okay. Alright, so the two points we want, I believe, are this LED A2 point and then this LED C2 point. These two right here. So if you're looking at this group of buttons next to the right button, there's these three vertical ones right in a row. You want the middle one and the bottom one. So what we're going to do, get my soldering iron here, get some solder. There's the end. And I'm going to go ahead and tin those two pads some solder, and I think the resistor I have is physically entirely too small, so we'll have to do something to make it work. I'm using a, oops, an 0805 or 0805 resistor. I think a larger one might work a little bit better. I think it also might help to secure this board somehow so it stops tilting every time I put pressure on it. Okay, never mind, this might work. I'm just gonna feed that a blob of solder. There we go. And if this works, we should be good. That is freaking disgusting. Hang on. I'm going to use this here, because this is significantly less gross. God, even that. Ugh. Okay. So we do have to connect up the bottom screen again. We do not have to connect up the touch screen. Oh, we are missing something important here. You do need to plug in this Wi-Fi module, even though we're never going to use Wi-Fi on this thing again, because the uh, actual, like, the BIOS program that this board uses to boot is located on the Wi-Fi module. So this board will not boot without it, regardless of DS mode or Game Boy Advance mode, whatever. Okay, I think that's plugged in. And 
let's try it out. So I got a green light, white screen, anything else? screen itself could be bad. That would be disappointing. Of course that's further than we got before. I have no way of seeing if this works. Because there's no sound, no nothing. Let me plug let me find this top half, plug it back in. Even if the screen's busted, we might still have speakers. Okay. Volume is up. Oh. Well, it does seem to boot. There's just no, uh, no display. There's the pad right there. I'll just use that. Yeah, I can hear it doing something. Screen's just busted. Okay, well, hmm. I'm going to go uh, pause this video and look for uh, look for some parts. Fairly certain I have a lower screen somewhere. I'll be back. Okay, so I was looking for another screen. Couldn't find anything. I checked my extra parts console and found out a few important things here. First and foremost, it doesn't even have a cart slot for Game Boy Advance. Uh, second, it doesn't have a power switch, so I couldn't test it if I wanted to. And uh, that original motherboard that I was using, I decided that it was absolutely so fucking disgusting that I just threw it in a box and that's where it's going to stay until I probably throw it out or die. I don't know. Um, anyway, I went ahead and scrapped my... Uh, one of my reshelled consoles. Personally, I always thought this thing was ugly as hell. Not necessarily this particular color scheme, but this shell itself. I never liked how the buttons fit in it. Whatever. I'll save this and I'll rebuild it with uh, another parts console at some point. And as it turns out, uh, that white screen, or the screen that was just showing a white image, no actual display image, Turns out it was the motherboard. Works just fine in this console. So, there we have it. Uh, in the end, it, initially I thought I'd need a new console, and that's what I ended up using. So, this one should work fine. It worked fine before I took it apart, and, um, well, right now it's telling me I need to touch the screen or begin, but since the touch screen isn't plugged in, and since I have no button memories, I can't actually test it out. And like I said, I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna dump this out apparently. Eh, yeah, okay. So this membrane here, yeah, so the console itself still works fine. We'll have to do this again anyway, so I'm just gonna turn it off. All right. I guess if nothing else, at least I got a battery out of that thing. And a screen. Bottom screen works. Okay, so next up, now that we know that's working, the next thing to do, of course, if you don't care about sound, then I guess it doesn't really matter, but I want to have sound. Uh, BoxyPixel specifically cut these holes in the shell. This is a speaker grill, so that you could have uh, sound here. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it looks like, per his instructions, you need to cut this connector off, or desolder it, I suppose. Um, that doesn't look like something I want to do, but it looks like something I might have to do. 
he does sell speakers that should fit. I decided I'm going to go ahead and try some of these speakers that I had laying around. This is from uh, 3DS that I was refurbishing a little while ago. And uh, this module itself wasn't working in the console, but there's no reason these speakers shouldn't work. So let me go ahead and get this desoldered here. And th this will fit. I mean, it doesn't take up the whole area, but I think it should be fine. I don't think there should be any meaningful difference. Of course, my soldering iron's not fully heated up. There it goes. I'll just set that aside. So that'll fit in there, just like that. Let's see, do we have to trim that off? Yeah, we gotta trim that off. Okay, well, squeamish among you, I don't wanna turn away. I'm about to do something very naughty. This console is never going to work as a DS again, unless I solder a new one of those back in. I don't think I damaged the motherboard at all. Definitely damaged that though. But, now it fits perfectly. How convenient. Okay. already have some cut off. Ha! Huh, I'm thinking ahead. I'm going to go ahead and insulate that with some Kapton tape. Just in case. Fucking whoops. I just trimmed off the edge of the board. Instead of just the tape. Oh well. Hopefully I didn't break anything. Let's double check. Alright, yeah, it's still fine. Okay, so, let's get this speaker connected here. That's gonna go like that. Hopefully the wires are long enough. Let me, uh... So if we take a look at this here, we can see the left speaker is this SPL... Or S... Yeah, SPL0 right here, it's right next to the resistor, or the right speaker is this SPR0 right here, and I'm guessing the ground doesn't matter too much, but let's take a look at Mix Guide here, and this is on his website, probably scrolled right past, oh, there we go, so yeah, he uses the SPL0, and it looks like the other one just goes to ground. So that's easy enough. There's a ground right there. Okay. Let's see if we have enough slack on these wires here. That needs to go there. Oh, it's going to be just a hair too short. Isn't that the worst? What about the other one? I don't think it matters too much, the polarity, especially if you're only using one speaker. 
Uh, it's a hair too short as well. Okay. So I'm going to use some 30 gauge Kynar. And I'm going to cut myself a little extra slack just so I have something to work with here. So I guess I'm making my wires about twice as long as they need to be, but I'd rather have extra wire that I can fold up than have them be too short again. Should be good enough. Ew. There we go. Tin both those points. Oh, I'm putting the iron away. need to fix that in just a sec because that's an awful solder joint. But for some reason I'm choosing to do this backwards. There we go. soldering iron away too. I don't need to. So the solder on this speaker is probably lead free. Judging by uh, the fact that it's not melting. There we go. should be it. It would probably be wise to tape this down, but I never said I was wise, what did I? Alright, so let's do some buttons. I'm gonna go with black buttons here, and the way that this is cut, uh, of course you use your original buttons, I'm looking for an A. There's one. You can, if you want, drill out these two holes. I don't know what size you need to use. Um, but you can drill these out and then you can use your uh, X and Y buttons too. I think you'd have to... Uh, you might... That might not work so well. I don't think these are sized to take buttons. The hole is good enough, but the uh, flange won't fit. Well, never mind. Don't quote me on that. We'll just use half that membrane because that's what I have right there. And I think that's a deep pad membrane. And a deep pad. And then we need a start and a select. There's one more membrane. All right, stay. Set that aside for a sec while I plug this screen in. I'm gonna use this gross screen instead of the uh, nice one, only because the nice one has that golden border that matches that shell, and I don't really wanna have to 
strip that off or swap it out. Besides, this one will probably clean up nicely if I take the touch screen off. Okay. Now, let's try this thing out. So, first thing, the wires are going to have to go below that. afraid of the buttons are falling out. Okay. So we have to route the wires down below this capacitor and back up. I'm going to flip that around. Yeah. Okay. That should work. Fix the buttons. By the way, half this membrane, the other half is in uh, this console here. So, and both my macros are using the same parts. It's so cute. Okay. Now, we should be good to go. probably recommended to tape this down because there's actually kind of a lot of wiggle room now. It's going to rattle. I'll, uh, I'll come back to that when I figure out something good for that. Next, we got to use the screws that this came with that I thought, oh there they are, right here. You can't use your original screws because they're uh, sized to screw into plastic. Whereas these go into the aluminum here. But the positioning and everything, oops, sorry for hitting the camera, it's all the same. still. I'm going to use this metal bottom, or metal, uh, black bottom here. I just need to find a power switch. That looks good. Volume. Oh, yeah, and we need shoulder buttons. That was beat to hell. That's not. There we go. That'll work. That's R. That's another R. There's an L. Okay. And then I am going to just use these springs and pegs from the aftermarket buttons. Just try and save myself some time here. Oh, I see a problem with that speaker already. That's probably why it's easier to use the speaker boxy pixel cells. Not only is his case designed around it, it's shaped a little bit more conveniently. I might still be fine though. I don't know. I'll let you know in a sec. hate these stupid little springs. I'm 
Once you've got them in, though, they should stay on their own. I almost jumped out. Okay. Eh, that might be fine. Now make sure your volume lines up. Make sure your power lines up. And uh, screw it together. Again, with the screws that it came with, not the original ones. If you buy, uh, while well, I'm thinking about it, if you buy everything from BoxyPixel, so the uh, resistors included, uh, he does send you two even though you only need one. Well, I don't like that at all. Probably don't want to use that screw. I don't know that the cart will fit. Yeah, the cart doesn't fit with that screw in there. Whatever, we'll work that out later. Um, yeah, BoxyPixel sells everything that you need to make this thing. So, the resistors, um, the faceplate, obviously, that comes with the screws, and the speaker. If you pick up the resistors, he sends you two, even though you only need one. Uh, but there's a reason for that. These things are tiny as hell, and they will fuck off on you real quick. I, uh, tonight even, I went through three resistors, even though I only needed two. That is not the right battery. Whatever, I'll find a battery cover later. It's unimportant. There we go. Oh, my touch screen doesn't work. Not a big deal. But disappointing nonetheless. I'll set the date and time later. By the way, DS consoles, not DSI's mind, but DS consoles, are region free. So if you want, you can pick up like a Japanese unit or something. You can even change the language in the system UI. Uh, that's a problem. If you have no idea what just happened, let me walk you through it. So, we gotta go into the system. I keep forgetting to touch screen. Gotta change that to bottom screen. And by the way, the language setting is right next to that. So now, boom, there we go. And as you can hear, the sound works, the volume will still work. You could use headphones if you want. What y'all think? I think it's pretty slick. I never use this thing. I was always afraid it was too delicate, especially with how this screen is. But this, I'm really liking this. This feels solid. And uh, I might actually play this. I, I especially like this cutout. Anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any ideas on how to make this better, I think uh, a different color screen border would work. Of course, I'll probably put a new touch screen in this disgusting thing.
but there you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.